Good afternoon, Miles here. I'm up at a little remote office uh, in the mountains. If you've seen some of my other videos, you may have seen this place before, but it's off grid, so there's no mains electricity or mains water or mains telephone or anything like that. It really is just a building on its own. And uh, it's a bit of a difficult trek to get up to it. Um, but the electrical system inside it is powered by an enormous 12 volt battery bank that I'll show you in a second. So in an ideal world, the battery bank that's in the building behind me would be charged up by a big array of solar panels or even a big wind turbine to keep the batteries topped up. But we're a little bit restricted here because we're in a national park and there's quite strict rules on that sort of thing you can put in. So unfortunately what we have to do is come up periodically and run a little petrol generator just to top the batteries up that way. Now the problem with that system is it's hard to know how often I need to come up. It depends how much people are in here, how much they're using the heater, how much they're using the lights. So I've come up with a system that um, gives me a voltage reading of the battery remotely. I'm going to show you today. So here's the battery bank. It's 1,500 amp hour, 12 volts. They're actually forklift truck batteries. They're great big things. You have to top them up with water every so often. But they really are uh, fantastic strong batteries. And that's the feed uh, into the building itself where we're going to go now. First thing I want to do is just show you some of the gear on the wall behind me. This building has a 4G internet connection. There's a, a modem in the attic with a little antenna. Um, but I want to show you this first. This is an Ethernet switch made by a company called Brainboxes. www.brainboxes.com. Uh, they're, not, they're not sponsoring me or anything. Um, but it's uh, it's made in the UK and it's it's a ruggedized remote environments uh, network switch. It's uh, 100 megabits, so they do a gigabit version as well. Um, the good thing about it is it'll work on like literally any voltage um, that you might need in a place like this. It's 5 to 30 volts DC in there. It uses very, very little power. The draw is like a watt for the whole thing. Uh, it's, it's ruggedized inside, so everything's covered in like a film. So even quite damp environments, freezing environments, even quite hot environments. It's a, a good, tough network switch and it was only uh, about 30 pounds brand new from brain boxes um you know you can get an unbranded chinese one for 20 quid or you can get this one for 30 and this is a it's a, it's a good investment so i recommend that but the main thing i wanted to show you today was this thing this little circuit board here it's uh put my hand in it for scale it's not very big it's actually a voltmeter and what it does is it transmits the voltage that it receives uh, to a website of your choice or it can message you something like that i'll show you the the software side of it soon but this is something i got from a company that makes them in the czech republic and again it was pretty cheap i think it was off the top of my head i think it was about 50 pounds uh, i'll put a, a link in the description anyway uh, so you can you can go and have a look um, but very very simply you have to obviously power it so there's a power coming in there it'll run on anything from it says here 5 to 28 volts dc i think on the website it said it was a wider range and then i think it said something like 5 to 35 volts dc or something but anyway that's what it says and it will receive um, and measure voltage from four different sources i've only got one so this comes from the battery bank outside uh, but it will do other ones these other sockets are for other things that I don't even know really. Um, it doesn't really matter. So you've got a network port there. So basically what this thing does is every minute it measures the incoming voltage from the battery. And it sends a message over the internet via the ethernet port uh, to tell me what the voltage is. I brought my little laptop with me today and this connects to the Wi-Fi in the building. So it'll be the same network that the, uh, the, the voltmeter is on, so I can show you the, the software interface. I appreciate this isn't really clear. And uh, you see what's going on today, the, uh, the counting the votes in the US for Biden versus Trump. There's no, uh, no result yet. I'll just minimize that for a second. The uh, voltmeter comes with uh, this program. It's called Microchip Ethernet Discoverer. And all it does is it runs this little window and it just tells you what the address is of the voltmeter on your network. Okay, I appreciate that's not necessarily all that clear. Uh, maybe I can make it clear if I just uh, dim down the display a little bit. Is that clearer? Yeah, I guess so. 
Okay, well, we'll go with that. So it's telling me that little board is on 192.168.1.71. So if I go back to my browser and type that in, 192.168.1.71. Is it one? Seventy one. Okay, so this uh, is basically like a little web server that exists on that um, voltage meter, and very simply, when you go to the appropriate address, it just lists out the the four voltages for the four inputs. I'm only worried about one, so it's showing me the voltage is at twelve point two two, which is great. So if you've got like a, um, a battery bank, say outside in the shed or something like that. And you're, uh, and you're upstairs or whatever, and you want to know what the voltage is, you can just log on with your phone uh, to, to the address and see. So, providing you're on the same network, you can just connect straight to the, um, the, the application that's, that's built into the, uh, the voltmeter. You don't need to install anything or anything like that, as long as you know what the address is, so that other program will tell you. You just go on, it'll, it'll tell you the, uh, the volts of your battery, or whatever it is you're measuring, actually. Uh, I should say there it is uh, maximum of 70 volts DC is its maximum uh, range. What you can also do, and this is something I do, is you can get it to um, periodically send a message. Now this uh, remote DB option, you can give it a server name and then like a, a path to a script, a server side script. You can say there how often you want it to send it and which values you want it to send. And what I've done is on some uh, company web space that we've got, I've set up a little uh, ASP script that you could use, you know, uh, PHP or something if you wanted, or .NET. And it uh, will draw out a voltmeter for me so I can see anywhere in the world, uh, if I wanted to, what the, the battery voltage was. I'll show you that in a second. Um, also, you can get it to send to a ThinkSpeak account, which I do as well. Uh, sorry, ThingSpeak. Uh, if you go to thingspeak.com, you can open an account for free uh, and it just lets you uh, receive data from a, uh, an internet device, uh, in this case the voltmeter. So you put in your, your key and your, your bits in here, what, what values you want, and it'll, uh, it'll send it off to uh, your Thingspeak account and you can use it to graph the data. It's just like populating like an Excel spreadsheet for you. It just does it all for you, so you don't need to worry about any programming or anything like that. So I shall uh, show you that uh, in a second. I just wanted to show you this. I know it's not brilliantly clear. Uh, this is a server-side script that I'd written. Uh, I'm not going to bother explaining how to write ASP scripts on this video. It's a little bit out of the scope of what I'm trying to show. But I've written a script that basically draws a, uh, like a, a voltage bar there from 0% to 100% and then draws like a colored bar to show you sort of how far across it is. So if I want to, I can log on to this from well, the Coima if I wanted to and uh, and see what the, the battery voltage is doing. Not that I'm gonna do a lot from there anyway, but it's useful because, uh, you know, I live half an hour away, so I, I can tell remotely um, at what point I need to come back in and, and run the generator for a bit. Okay, just to show you uh, this as well, I've just logged into my ThingSpeak account and uh, it basically it's receiving the data from the voltmeter. Uh, so I can do this as well as the server-side script. I don't know why it's coming out on the camera, but it's plotting it over time. So this is October, end of October. This is today, November the 7th. Um, and it's showing the sort of the, these sort of spikes are when the generator is running. So the voltage goes right up when the generator is running, obviously, because the system's in 14 volts plus. And then the generator turns off and uh, it slowly comes down. Then I've run the generator again um, and then it sort of slowly depletes again. So these spikes are the generator. And um, you can see little sort of dips within the generator charging cycles. And that's just because I've been fiddling with the electrics here while I've been up here doing uh, doing a charge cycle so it's it's not as clean and pure as it as it should be. So yeah, it's a really interesting uh, and useful way to no. So yeah, it's a really useful thing for me to be able to test the uh, the voltage level remotely. Uh, I actually get it to send me an email once the voltage gets below 12.1. 
so I know I need to drive up here and, uh, and run the generator for a bit. So there's no danger of it, of it running out as long as I know uh, remotely. And it works really well. Um, the thing speaker count, it's free uh, unless you use an awful lot. Uh, but for a single voltmeter, um, you can just use the free account. That's fine. I, I recommend it. There's plenty of examples on there. You can configure it to do all kinds of stuff and and output the data to an Excel file and stuff like that. If you you want to see how your your battery performs over time, uh, or if you're happy to do a bit of website scripting uh, and you've got a bit of service space somewhere, you can do that too. I've used ASP, but there's loads of other scripting languages you can. You can get it to, to do whatever you want, really. Uh, so yeah, it's it's really handy. And uh, if you've got a remote office or a remote building or a remote battery bank off grid, and you want to be able to keep in touch with the uh, the battery on it, maybe you've got like a, a boat or something, and you want to keep an eye on what the voltage is doing, make sure that your solar panels are charging it or whatever. Uh, it's a good way of doing it. You know, I, I recommend it. It's not difficult to set up. It's not expensive to set up, and it's certainly very useful for me. So I hope you found that video interesting and useful. Um, do please like and subscribe, put any comments you want in, uh, in the bottom or ask me any questions. And I hope to see you soon in a future video. Okay, thanks very much. Bye.